uh, difficult. So with that in mind, here's how we can very easily do that. Take a look at this max, op max function that we have down here, max, zero, options, etc. Uh, let me explain this formula to you. It's actually not that difficult. So let's start with the first thing here. We have the exercise price. Let's start with what's inside the parentheses. The parentheses is the exercise price, which is how much at this point? It's $45. So this is $45. Now, what is the current price? The current price is $100. That's the 100. So 45 divided by 100 equals what? This equals 0.45. Now, let's take a look at the next part of this equation. We have 1 minus this particular quotient. So 1 minus that, 1 minus 0.45 equals 0.55. Now, how many options do we have? We had number of options, we had 10 options. So now you take 10 options, multiply by 0.55, and what do you have? You have 5.5 shares. That is how you would use this formula, and all you need to do is input the exercise price and input the current price. Now, that's how this formula works. The last part of this formula, why do we have this max zero? Well, it's pretty straightforward because what if this $100, what if the stock price was not 100 what if it was $20? Would you, in a rational financial decision, exercise these options? You probably wouldn't. Why not? You have the right to buy one share at $45 a share. So you pay $45, but it's currently worth $20. So if you were to sell it for $20, you lose money. So whoever's holding this option, what chances are they would not exercise this, which simply means that these options are out of the money. If they're out of the money, they do not cause any share dilution because there's no additional shares being issued. So again, no additional shares being issued if it's out of the money, no share dilution. So how does this max zero take care of that? Well, let's take a look at this. If this $100 stock price instead was $20, take a look at what happens. What's the current exercise price? The exercise price is $45. What's the current price? The current price is $20. That number, that division, that quotient equals somewhere around, let's say, a little over two. It's greater than two is, is the important number. Now. If it's greater than 2, or specifically it's a number greater than 1, what are you going to do when you take 1 minus a number greater than 1, what are you going to do? You're going to get a negative number. So once you get a negative number and you multiply the number of options, which is 10 in this case, it doesn't matter, you multiply a negative number by any number that's not negative, you still get a negative number. So once you take this negative number and you tell Excel, hey listen, take the max of either zero or this negative number, what do you think Excel is going to do? It's going to come back and tell you, let me take zero. So if it says take zero, that means what? There is no share dilution. There's no additional shares that would have been issued had the management team exercised these options. So from that perspective, the share dilution you'll see is zero here. Let's see how this particular formula, this max function is applied to this particular analysis. So in C18, I'm just going to very quickly copy this formula down so that we can take a look at it as with the explanation. So this is saying take max of 0 or C9. What's C9? C9 is number of options. That equates to this part of the formula right there. And then it says take that, C10. What is C10? C10 is the exercise price of $45 which is here in our formula. And then it takes the current price, C11, that's the 20 bucks. That 20 bucks corresponds to this current price. And therefore, when you look at this, again, it's taking the 45 divided by the 20. That's a positive, that's a number greater than one. One minus that will give you a negative number. Max of that negative number times zero, you're gonna get zero. So that's exactly what this particular formula is doing right now.